folks, welcome to Community Pulse. I'm your host, Brian Lamore. On today's show, we'll be talking about the campaign or combined federal campaign for giving for, through federal employees. If you're a federal employee, you've received a, a brochure like this. It has over 22,000 organizations that you can donate to through your payroll. It's pretty much painless. Every two weeks, they take a small amount out. You probably don't notice it, but at the end of the year and to the organizations, it makes a significant difference. And we have about 20,000 federal employees in Montana. This campaign will be concluding December 15th. So uh, we'll be talking about the different organizations you contribute to and what difference it makes in their lives. Of course, we have some wonderful guests here on Community Pulse. On my left, we have uh, Katie Gallagher. You're with the United Way. Yep. Uh, Bill Crane, you're with Montana Shares. Yes. And Laurie Chamberlain, you're with the Montana National Guard, and you're with the CFC Board. Uh, welcome to the show, all of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Well, now, Laurie, let's start with you. The combined federal campaign uh, has been going on for quite a while, and it's really important, and it's 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 a great uh, benefit for uh, federal employees. Tell us more about it. So, um, charitable giving. Um, from federal employees was kind of a, 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 a circus, I would call it, <laughs> in the 40s and the 50s. So uh, yeah. President Eisenhower and then eventually President Kennedy decided to put all of the nonprofits that were looking for uh, donations under one campaign, mm -hmm. and it's called the Combined Federal Campaign, and it started about 1961. So federal employees can donate to the charity of their choice based on the very long extensive list that we have here, like you said, 22,000 uh, different charities. But this uh, booklet lists them all, and uh, you donate through your payroll, through payroll deductions twice a month, just like you were saying. And um, these organizations that get your donations, they benefit greatly. If it wasn't yeah. for the people who are, be who are willing to donate, they would probably suffer much more than what people do already. Already, and there's uh, about 150 organizations in Montana yeah. uh, of the 22,000. Right, so um, I'm one of the board of the directors for the uh, local coordinating committee for Southwestern Montana. Mm -hmm. So federal employees with the various agencies from Dillon and Hamilton, Wise River, Deer Lodge, Butte, Helena, all fall under our management, the coordinating committee's management of uh, that particular region. And we have about 100 agencies, federal agencies that are mm -hmm. in our region, and um, like you said, about 150 nonprofits throughout Montana that they can donate to. That's great. And you know, a little, even a little bit of a donation makes a big impact. You think, well, I can go as low as a dollar, <laughs> but that does make a, a difference, then you can go as high as you want to. You can go as high as you want to. You can make a one-time donation by check, or then again, they're always encouraging that you do it through the payroll deduction system because mm -hmm. it's painless. You don't feel it. You don't yeah. you really notice that the money is gone. But I want to just um, share with the uh, listening audience, if you donate a dollar a week, which would be $2 every two weeks out of your paycheck, mm -hmm. you are providing three 30-minute appointments for health assessment and counseling for individuals facing physical, developmental, or mental health challenge. Hmm. That's $2 um, every two weeks. Yeah. $2 every two weeks isn't, doesn't it's hurt anybody. It's a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, not e it's, it's even less than a cup of coffee. Yeah. So $5 a week will provide um, clothing, shoes, and a winter coat for one individual who has lost everything in a home fire. Um, how significant is that? And that's mm -hmm. $10 a month. Or $10 a week or $20 a month will provide baby formula for 52 low-income infants. Mm -hmm. So that, those are just some examples of where your money can go and just how much it takes, and it's really quite little. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're talking about someone who lost their home in a fire. I mean, that can happen to anybody. And, Absolutely. And, you know, there are points in our lives when uh, something could happen to us, and we do need some assistance. And we don't give with the idea that we're going to get back, but no one's immune from needing help. Right. Yeah. I, I remember one of the stories of one of the ladies who used to work <coughs> for us. She was new to Montana, and she took her car with her children down a dirt road in the winter months, <laughs> not, un, not realizing that it was dangerous. And um, they got stuck, and Search and Rescue came and were able to help them. Well, Search and Rescue is one of the charities under the CFC. Mm -hmm. So um, hospice is one of the charities that is under the CFC. Humane societies are charities that are under, and lots of other animal organizations yeah. are all, all under the CFC. Um, the United Way and, and Montana Shares are also recipients of donations through the CFC. Oh yeah, and imagine Food Share, they're helping uh, 
to feed people like one in seven uh, people need need assistance with food right which is amazing Absol <laughs> that know, is amazing in this, in this unbelievable day and world well yeah now um, okay, Katie you're with uh, United Way mm -hmm. and how important is this uh, combined federal campaign I mean it uh, like we're saying two dollars a week really adds up and it really helps your organization doesn't it it really does and it really helps our 31 partner organizations as well mm -hmm. so they're listed um, in the brochure we are a federation um, and so there's our 31 partner organizations are listed under us in the brochure and we really do see the impact every day um, that mm -hmm. people's donations have on these organizations um, you're talking about food share um, five dollars a paycheck is ten dollars or ten pounds of food mm -hmm. for a family in need right so every paycheck you're having a really significant impact um, for a local family um, my favorite example um, that we've been sharing a lot this year is with Peers Unlimited, um, mm -hmm. probably a lesser known organization here in our community. It's Partners Ensuring Equal Rights and Supports, so kind of a long <laughs> acronym there, yeah. but um, it's an organization that works with people with physical and developmental disabilities, and they shared that um, $2 a paycheck can send 12 of their clients to the carousel here in Helena. Oh. And you know, yeah. you read that at first and you think, you know, compared to food or some basic needs, that might not be the most compelling story. But then mm -hmm. when you really hear the people talk about what um, an opportunity that is for somebody who lives on a very limited um, budget, mm -hmm. who has a developmental or physical disability and really has limited opportunities to get out of the house, that makes their entire month. So oh, it's really yeah. a quality of life um, opportunity for them so we have tons we have 31 yeah. <laughs> more than 31 examples like that from our partner agencies mm -hmm. so then as a uh, united way then is sort of an umbrella organization they receive mm -hmm. the donation then you reallocate to your uh, members or? um not not necessarily for the cfc <coughs> so people can mm -hmm. designate um directly to the agencies for the cfc but definitely oh. um like montana shares in our local campaigns, we do act as a funding intermediary for those 31 nonprofits. And you help those individuals out. And how does uh, an individual become a part of United Way, or not an individual, an organization? Yeah. So to become part of United Way, we have an application <coughs> process. So I think um, Bill can share a little later about how mm -hmm. to become part of the CFC. But yeah. um, very similar to that, you apply. Um, you have to be a health and human service organization. And you have to be located here um, and serving people in Lewis and Clark, Jefferson, and Broadwater County. So mm -hmm. our specific United Way um, only serves the Tri-County area here in Montana. Okay, so we've got your, uh, your website and your telephone up yep. on uh, the screen. Yep. If people were to contact you, what, what kind of questions or how can you help the individuals if they were to call? Um, for people in need well, in, in the well, community. In people yeah. in need or for organizations? Yeah, so for organizations, our annual application period opens in February. And mm -hmm. so um, it's actually pretty cool. We have a, something called the allocations review process where over 100 community volunteers will then look at your organization's application and vet your application, what you're doing, your finances and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, community volunteers will interview your organization, your board of directors, um, as well as people that you serve in the community to determine whether you can become a partner agency. Um, mm -hmm. We field many, many calls every single day <laughs> from people in need in our community, and that's really um, the value of our 31 partner agencies, is they all work together to help people who need help. And it's, mm -hmm. it's food share, it's family promise. Um, most of the organizations that you're familiar with in the health and human service sector are partner agencies. And then you can help redirect, and yes. the website has those organizations. And it you does. you have uh, some idea of what you might need, you can find the organization that can help out. Definitely, yep. you or on the website. Yep. <laughs> okay. And Bill, you're with uh, Montana Shares, and you're, you're, you're a federation also. Now, what does Montana Shares do, and how are they unique, and how do they provide assistance? Well, Montana Shares is very similar to what United Way does. We do very complementary work. Mm -hmm. We have slightly different focus. We ex serve a bigger area. We serve all of Montana, so groups that are statewide. For instance, Komen Race for the Cure is called Komen Idaho Montana now. Mm -hmm. They're one of our member groups. We have local groups like the Lewis and Clark Humane Society, but then we have Montana Food Bank Network is another one of the really well-received groups. They collect nine million pounds of food a year and distribute it across the entire state. Wow. And then there's other groups like Helen Area Habitat for Humanity that's a member group. And they, you know, obviously going through the trials that they've been through lately with the fire in their building and the restore. Yeah. So they've been trying to rebuild everything, yes. <laughs> their stuff as well as the community. And then there's uh, you know, other groups that, we sort of have groups for everybody. The Montana Wilderness Association, Montana Wildlife Federation. So there's groups that are working on the environment. There's groups that help people. Camp Make a Dream is one of our new groups this year. 
and then also um, Montana Supporting Soldiers is a new group this year. Mm -hmm. So there's just this huge variety. We have a total of probably four, or excuse me, 40 member groups, but only about 20 of them are actually what are called CFC eligible. Mm -hmm. CFC is our term for the Combined Federal Campaign. <laughs> we live by acronyms. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, what makes them uh, CFC eligible versus uh, a not? Uh, the, okay. One of the big things, there's probably a lot more nonprofits in the state of Montana that would be eligible for the CFC. If you're under 100,000, you can pretty much apply just as of any 401c3, but, um, or excuse me, 501c3. But the, the difference is, then there's sort of a gap. If you're above $100,000, you have to have either an audit or a financial review or a financial compilation, kind of depending on how much funds you bring in. Mm -hmm. And in the middle there, some of the groups that are just over 100,000, it really doesn't make sense for them to be doing an audit because an audit's very expensive. It's five, $6,000 to mm -hmm. so, so spending five or 6% of your annual budget for to show you're financially re responsible is not always a financially responsible <laughs> thing. Yeah. So there's c some groups that it's a challenge to get in the CFC, but kind of once you hit the quarter million dollar mark, most of those groups are getting an audit or a compilation or something like that. And mm -hmm. so those are the groups, you kind of get the small groups and then you get the bigger groups in, that are part of the CFC. You know, I, what I like with Katie and Bill, what you're saying is that there's a, oh, I guess, a background check or some type of certification or there's verification that these organizations are doing well and uh, they're meeting the expectations that if you were to give money away, you'd want to give them to them. And Lori, a part of the uh, booklet, you have information about an organization, but they also have some percentages on there. What do those percentages represent and how can uh, an individual contributing rely on those? So um, the booklet lists the various organizations, gives them the name, and then they have an individual number, and that's how you designate, you determine, you, that's the number that you put on your pledge form mm -hmm. that I'm going to lift up here to um, uh, discern, discern who you want your money to go to. And then it gives a little synopsis about the organization and what they do. And at the end, there is a percentage. And that percentage tells the uh, donor that uh, this is the percentage amount that's going toward administrative costs and the rest of it goes actually to the organization. A lot of people um, think that if the uh, percentage is very high that that's a bad thing. But there are some organizations where the, the administrative costs are high because they have very large staffs and mm -hmm. various other things. For instance, Intermountain Children's Home, that would be an example. So, um, and also then there are very, very low percentages. And I also caution people with regards to that sometimes because people don't want to work for free and these organizations, nonprofits do need to be managed. So we don't mm -hmm. want people to be just volunteering. A lot of organizations are predominantly volunteers, mm -hmm. but there's also um, overhead. There's, there's utilities that have to be paid and things. So that's what mm -hmm. that percentage indicates. You want a well-managed organization that doesn't spend all of their money on administration, but also you don't want one that doesn't have any kind of an organization at all. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be giving your money potentially to some of those organizations. You have to be careful. We have to look if it's a hands-on organization. If they need a lot of staff to provide service to clients, there's going to be a lot of overhead yes. in providing that. If they're uh, passing their money through to someone else, it'd be lower. But if it's zero, it's uh, it's hard to work for free right. and, to, and to stay it, in business. The, exactly. <laughs> and um, could I ask Bill sure. a quick question? So the CFC, um, can you talk about the CFC application process and when that starts and what the deadlines are so that organizations that are considering it might will have will know when they have to have it in you're gonna put me on the spot <laughs> because <laughs> I was all prepped for the new CFC rules which have been delayed a year but I believe it's a January 15th deadline but I'm not positive on that it had used to be about March 15th and I think it moved back to February 15th and I believe it was going to or has moved back to January but I'm not totally sure the truth of the matter is if you are interested and there's lots of groups in Montana that should participate as yeah. independents probably just google it and find out I'm, I'm sorry I don't know the answer right <laughs> off the top of my head I just the form the application was just released probably in the last month or so and so I, I just finally downloaded it a couple of days ago and I haven't even <laughs> looked at it yet. So if nonprofits want to have assistance with the application process, they can call, call both United Way or Montana Shares for assistance with questions and things yeah, like that. Yeah, we can definitely help them yeah. out. We help all of our member groups out. If they're simple questions, we'll help other people out too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or guide them to the, to the folks that can. Right, the um, right resources. Yep. Right. That's great. And Bill, you know, I, I believe the state campaign just concluded. How well did the state campaign 
The state campaign was, I believe, about $502,000. Mm -hmm. We just finished up a six-week campaign for that. And uh, so it was probably, I think, 15000 more than the previous year. Great. And so, you know, huge, huge. Between the state employees and the federal employees, it's almost a million dollars that's wow. be being given each year through all those federal and state workers. Yeah. It's a huge impact on our community. It is. Then you make sure they're all a 501c3, so they are uh, a charitable contribution. You can take it off at the end of the year. And, Lori, I noticed on the application um, form right here that it looks like there's Charity drive one two three four five. You could donate to five different uh, charities, and you can donate. Or you can uh, allocate how much you would give. Yes. Okay. So you can also do even more if you want to turn in multiple uh, uh, donation uh, slips. But yeah, you can donate up to five different organizations on the slip, and then they want you to be very careful with your math. Make sure that your calculations <laughs> are correct. Otherwise, we have to come back to you to make sure we're sending the money that you are donating to the right organizations. But there's also um, an easier way to even do it today. There's, there's the website, montanacfc.org, and folks can donate through the website. And the campaign, the manual campaign ends on December 15th, but because of the new website, you can donate at any time all year long. Oh, that's so great. That's a, that's a change in recent years, and it's very positive. Well, that's really good. And uh, so, so you can contribute all year round through the website. You can do up until December 15th, you can fill out a form. But now when you have 22,000 different organizations, where do you start to think about where to contribute? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a great question. You don't want to read each one. <laughs> no, you don't want to read each one. So if you have particular aff affiliations for um, international or national organizations, they are located at various places in the book. If you want your monies to go to local organizations, this year in the booklet, that starts on page 20. And um, there, like you said, there are about 150 nonprofits throughout the state of Montana that are listed in the organization. And so from 20, page 20 to page 23 are the local mm -hmm. uh, nonprofits for our state. But there are international organizations, International Wildlife Federation, for example, and then there are national organizations. It depends all on, on um, where the employee wants their, wants their uh, funds to go. So for instance, federal employees, as, as Bill said, move about and so someone who maybe is from Montana but living in Virginia working for the federal government why want, might want to donate to a local organization so our organizations are listed in there for them. Oh that's great uh, well now we're drawn to a close in the show I'd like to get some final thoughts starting with you Katie what would you like our viewers to remember about <coughs> excuse me United Way? Yeah that every donation counts mm -hmm. um, so whether it's through our local campaign whether it's through the state employee charitable giving campaign or the combined federal campaign the CFC which we talked about today every donation matters and it really adds up so we were talking earlier one dollar a paycheck might not seem a lot personally but when you and all your co-workers give one dollar a paycheck it truly adds up and has a huge impact on nonprofits. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's less than a cup of coffee you could probably afford a couple cups of coffee a week exactly, <laughs> every yeah. other week uh, and Bill what are some of your final thoughts? Well I think what Katie mentions the biggest thing is one of our jobs as federations is we scrape bring all these funds from all these different places together and then we distribute them in sort of meaningful fashions with quarterly checks where if you were trying to write a dollar or 50 cent checks every <laughs> month that would make wouldn't make sense at all yeah. so that's the biggest thing the other thing that I think is really important is this is an employee benefit because if you are working and you really know that you're going to support nonprofits in your community you tend to get all these solicitations at the end of the year and that's when you tend to want to be buying presents for the holidays mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. way of making one decision once a year having it come out of your paycheck twice a month is an employee benefit it's a super easy way to achieve your goal of giving to nonprofits without stressing your checkbook out it's just it's gone before you even see it it's the most wonderful payroll deductions one of the most amazing things out there and it's, it's almost painless <laughs> you <laughs> <bet>. <laughs> some of your final thoughts the only thing that I would like to say if organizations or if um, employees have any questions they're welcome to call me mm -hmm. and at any time and my, my number has been up on the uh, uh, board a couple of times so they'll get a hold of you well thank you all for what you do I mean it takes a lot of work and organizing to get yeah. this done and people don't realize it but it's, it's a big job and thank you for helping our community and the nation in doing this yeah it's wonderful thank you Brian thank yep. you. and for our viewers again you know we're talking about the combined federal campaign you've seen this booklet if you're a federal employee it has 22,000 organizations you can donate to 150 in Montana uh, donate by December 15th thank you for joining us <laughs>